So after 16 films, one TV show, and technically a one-shot, the DCEU is over. And to pay tribute to this strange, confused, yet pretty entertaining cinematic universe, I have decided to create an iceberg centered around the DCEU. One of Warner Bros. many attempts at creating a cinematic universe to rival Marvel and Star Wars. Now, I've tackled DCEU topics before in Iceberg videos based on Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, and The Flash. So if you're wondering if these topics will be in the video, they won't. Go check out these icebergs to see me talk about them. However, there are some topics that I will cover again. These come from the original Batman Iceberg, because in the three years since that video, new information has come out about these topics. And finally, before I begin the iceberg, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, drop a comment about your favorite entry, and uh, maybe even subscribe to the channel. I have got icebergs based on Marvel, DC, Halo, Cyberpunk, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mass Effect, Call of Duty, etc. And I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. I've got even more superhero-themed icebergs on the way, like ones based on the X-Men, Daredevil, Green Lantern, Captain America, Hulk, etc. So with all that being said, let's begin. The Real Lex Luthor Debate Jesse Eisenberg's portrayal of Lex Luthor in Batman v Superman, Justice League 2017, and The Snyder Cut is controversial to say the least. Because this version of Lex didn't really act like any other version of Lex Luthor in any other piece of media, a theory was quickly created that this Lex was actually Lex Luthor Jr. and that the real Lex Luthor would show up in a future film. And guess what? It turns out that Lex Luthor's real name in the DCEU is Lex Luthor Jr. Case closed. The real Luther will show up in the future. Right? Well, no. Because there's one tiny little problem. Lex Luthor's dad, Lex Luthor Sr., is dead. And according to Zack Snyder, Lex Jr. is the one who killed Lex Sr. So yeah, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor really was the true Lex Luthor of the DCEU. Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn is a terrible title, as general audiences don't really know who the Birds of Prey are, and it's also an extremely long and obnoxious title. And Warner Bros. seem to agree. As after the film was released, the name of the film was changed to Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey. A much better title, in my opinion. Aquaman 3 When it comes to superhero cinematic universes, there's usually the intention to make at least three solo films for the main heroes. Spider-Man, Iron Man, Wonder Woman, Thor, Ant-Man, Captain America, etc. And Aquaman was no exception. Probably. A third Aquaman film was never actually announced. However, with the insane success of the first film and Jason Momoa's willingness to work with DC, a third film was more than likely in the cards at one point. Director James Wan even went on to say that The Lost Kingdom would set up a potential Aquaman 3, a film that he wanted to direct after a lengthy break from superhero films. However, the chances of a third Aquaman movie with Jason Momoa as Aquaman and Amber Heard as Mira are extremely slim. This is for multiple reasons. The first is the obvious one. The DCU is over. If a third Aquaman film were made, it would either have to be canon to the DCEU and confuse general audiences, or it would be canon to the DCU and confuse both general audiences and fans of the franchise, as that would mean that Aquaman 1 and 2 would have to be somewhat canon to the DCU, 
the second reason Aquaman 3 probably won't end up happening is that there's a very good chance that Jason Momoa is playing Lobo in the DCU. And James Gunn has already said that, unlike the MCU, actors will not play multiple characters in live action, though there are exceptions with animation. The third reason is, well, Jason Momoa himself saying that it probably won't happen. In December of 2023, he said that The Lost Kingdom would more than likely be his last time playing Aquaman, and that a sequel could potentially happen if The Lost Kingdom was received well. He then directly said that the chances for Aquaman 3 aren't looking too good. And the final reason for Aquaman 3 probably never happening is that Aquaman 2 wasn't a huge hit at the box office. It wasn't a flop, but it was a financial disappointment. So yeah, we'll probably never see what James Wan had planned for Aquaman 3. The Original Blue Beetle So this one is pretty much purely speculation, but originally, Blue Beetle was intended to be released as an HBO Max original film. However, by the end of 2021, it was decided that the film would be released in theaters. Because of this, Warner Bros. increased the film's budget by $50 million. This allowed the people behind the film to make the film even bigger. So while not confirmed, it's very likely that if Blue Beetle was released on HBO Max instead, it would have been a different film. Not entirely different, I am sure it would have still had a similar plot to what we ended up getting, but it's more than likely that some of the more CGI-heavy action sequences or designs would have either been simplified or scrapped entirely. The Snyderverse This is a term for Zack Snyder's DC films. Usually, it's in regards to either Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and the Snyder Cut, or it's in reference to Man of Steel, BVS, Locking Yourself Off Squad, Wonder Woman, and the Snyder Cut. Basically, it's Zack Snyder's vision of the DC Universe. And fans of the Snyderverse really want to see it continued with many different campaigns created to try and convince Warner Bros., James Gunn, DC, Snyder himself, and even Netflix for some reason, to continue the Snyderverse. This is, despite Zack Snyder, Ben Affleck, and Henry Cavill having moved on from the DCEU, and the fact that there is no chance of Ezra Miller ever working with Warner Bros. or DC again. The same can be said with Ray Fisher unless Snyder's involved. Box Office Bombs The DCEU is no stranger to box office bombs. Justice League 2017, Birds of Prey, Wonder Woman 1984, the 2021 James Gunn Squad film, Black Adam, Shazam! Fury of the Gods, The Flash, and Blue Beetle were all bombs. Granted, Birds of Prey was impacted by COVID-19, as were Wonder Woman 1984 and the 2021 Squad film. And those two films were even released on HBO Max the same day as their theatrical releases. But still, that means that 8 of the 16 films made in the DCEU were box office bombs. That's half of the entire cinematic universe. But it gets worse. As both Batman v Superman and Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom underperformed, and the Snyder Cut didn't get nearly as many viewers as Warner Bros. wanted, being beaten out by Mortal Kombat, Godzilla vs. Kong, Space Jam A New Legacy, Dune, The Matrix Resurrections, and the 2021 Avengers Endgame Yourself Squad. In fact, in terms of Blu-ray sales, Birds of Prey beat the Snyder Cut in its first week. I genuinely don't think there's another film series with this many box office bombs. Black Adam 2 In October of 2022, it was announced that a sequel to Black Adam was in discussions. 
However, the film didn't actually go anywhere, as exactly two months after its announcement, Dwayne Johnson would confirm that Black Adam 2 was cancelled, and that he wouldn't be playing the character anytime soon. As to what the sequel would have been about, all we know for certain is that Superman would have been in it, and would have fought Black Adam. As to why the film was cancelled, it's primarily because of two reasons. Black Adam was a box office bomb, and the DCEU is now over. Ben Affleck Batman Film In July of 2015, it was announced that a Batman film set in the DCEU would be created, with Ben Affleck reprising his role as the Dark Knight. He would also direct, co-write, and produce the film. However, Ben Affleck would then step down from director in January of 2017, being replaced with Matt Reeves. But then, in early 2019, Ben Affleck would leave the film entirely, and be replaced with Robert Pattinson. And this would eventually lead to the film being reworked into the masterpiece known as The Batman. So why did Ben Affleck leave the film? Well, Ben Affleck left the DCU for a bit, for a couple of reasons. The first was that he showed Matt Damon the script for the film, and Matt Damon told Ben Affleck that, quote, I think the script is good. I also think you'll drink yourself to death if you go through what you just went through again. It turns out that during his time playing Batman, he relapsed into alcoholism due to multiple reasons, including the stressful nature of Justice League 2017's production. And so, Ben Affleck left the project, also stating that he just didn't feel passionate about the story anymore. So what was this film going to be about? Well, it was going to be about Deathstroke trying to ruin Batman's life. In fact, the Snyder Cut after credits scene was meant to directly lead into Ben Affleck's Batman film. Deathstroke was going to go after Batman because he blamed Batman for his son's death. It would have also been revealed that both he and Bruce trained together with the League of Assassins. Arkham Asylum would have also been featured in the film. And as of right now, that's all we know about this cancelled film. The DCU After a ton of box office bombs, controversial actors, and extremely mixed critical receptions, Warner Bros. decided to reboot the DCU into the DCU, aka the DC Universe. James Gunn and Peter Saffron were brought in to be the creative leads on this new cinematic universe. Also, unlike the DCEU, the DCU will be separated into phases, called chapters, with Chapter 1, Gods and Monsters, including the films Superman Legacy, The Authority, The Brave and the Bold, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, and Swamp Thing and shows like Creature Commandos, Waller, Lanterns, Paradise Lost, Booster Gold, Arkham Asylum, and Season 2 of Peacemaker. While it's been said several times that this reboot is simply a soft reboot, that's not really true, as outside of Peacemaker and Waller, pretty much everything is being fully rebooted like the Bat Family has already formed, and Wonder Woman may or may not exist. So yeah, the DCEU is over, and being replaced with the DCU. Zack Snyder's Justice League, Justice is Grey Because the world needed a third version of Justice League, a week after the Snyder Cut dropped, a black and white version of the Snyder Cut was released. This version of the film seems to be Zack Snyder's favorite, as he said that this is his ideal version of the film. Keep in mind though, this film isn't just the Snyder Cut with a black and white filter. It was created from scratch, that this comment on screen would ex uh, explains way better than I could. This version of the film doesn't have any new scenes or lines despite the trailer for this version including an alternate version of Joker's cameo at the end of the film, where he says, We live in a society. 
yeah, this scene wasn't in the film, and was instead released on Twitter via Zack Snyder. Jimmy Olsen Despite being a major Superman character, and appearing in all four Christopher Reeve Superman films, 1984's Supergirl, Superman Returns, Superman, the Animated Series, Smallville, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, and the Arrowverse, Jimmy Olsen only made one small appearance in the DCEU. He appears in Batman v Superman, where he's played by Michael Cassidy. He's a CIA agent who's killed by terrorists shortly after his introduction. This bizarre take on the character was widely mocked online, following the release of the film. This also led to rumors that Zack Snyder hated the character of Jimmy Olsen, which is why the character died so quickly. While this rumor hasn't been confirmed, Zack Snyder has commented on why he killed off the character so quickly. Turns out, Jimmy Olsen was a domino. Snyder has said, quote, it was a five-movie arc, and as the dominoes fall, as you go, you're ended up with the consequences. So the world is rebuilt again each time the movies continue. So, you know, if this was a TV show, I would say for sure we'd bring Jimmy back. Hopefully, as they die off, they give us something. They teach us something as they go. And that's kind of what their role is. So basically, Jimmy Olsen showed up to die. Cyborg Film In October of 2014, it was announced that a film centered on Cyborg was in development, with Ray Fisher and Joe Morden reprising their roles as Cyborg in Silas Stone. A release date was set for April 3rd, 2020, and the film sat dormant for years, until 2017, when Justice League was released, and everything changed. You see, Ray Fisher was treated extremely poorly during the development of the film, which soured his relationship with DC and Warner Bros. The film continued development until April of 2021, when Ray Fisher announced that he was walking away from both the character of Cyborg and the film. Though he did say he would come back to the role if Zack Snyder's planned Justice League sequels were revived, or if Zack Snyder were to direct the Cyborg film. However, this didn't end up happening, and the Cyborg film was officially cancelled, with Warner Bros. refusing to recast the character. As for the Cyborg film's plot, there's only two things we know about it. The first is that there were discussions in 2018 about including scenes from the 2017 Justice League film in the Cyborg film. However, after the release of the Snyder Cut, I doubt this would have happened. And finally, there were rumors that the film would be about Cyborg dealing with modern technology. Which is not really saying anything, because like, obvious, like, like obviously he's dealing with technology. He's, he's made of technology. What you, okay, okay, like good rumor. Batgirl. In April of 2018, it was announced that a Batgirl film set in the DCEU was in development, after the cancellation of Joss Whedon's DCEU Batgirl project. This film would be a straight-to-HBO Max streaming film. The film developed pretty slowly over the years, until 2021, when Leslie Grace was cast as Barbara Gordon. But that's not all. J.K. Simmons was confirmed to be returning as Commissioner Gordon, Brendan Fraser was casted as Firefly, and Michael Keaton would be returning as Batman. The movie ended filming in March of 2022, and post-production was going pretty well. But then, in August of 2022, Warner Bros. Discovery announced that the film was cancelled. Like, the entire thing despite the movie being completely filmed, and it featured some pretty high-profile actors. Warner Bros. would release a statement, lying about the film's cancellation, stating the film was canned because they're, quote, committed to making DC titles big theatrical event films, and Batgirl isn't that. 
Variety would then come out and report the film's cancellation was more than likely because of a tax write-off. Despite a strong campaign to get the film released, it seems that Warner Bros. isn't budging on the issue. As to what the film's plot would have been, all we know is that the film was going to be an origin story taking place in a universe post-Flash, where Michael Keaton Batman is around. Uh, yeah, the original ending to The Flash had Michael Keaton being the main DCEU Batman. Anyways, Batgirl would then face off against Killer Moth, Anthony Bressy, and Firefly. The film would have also introduced the character Alicia Yo. Despite this film being cancelled, it was reported that there had actually been talks with Leslie Grace about her playing Batgirl in the future. Dwayne Johnson tried to take over the DCEU. In 2022, the DCEU was in need of a Kevin Feige-like person to look over the entire franchise. And so, Dwayne Johnson tried to be that person. He began this process by pitching a Black Adam sequel where he'd fight Superman. He even convinced Warner Bros. to bring back Henry Cavill for Black Adam's post credit scene. This not only was leading to Black Adam 2, but it also basically jump-started production on Man of Steel 2. But it wasn't just Black Adam and Superman Dwayne Johnson was responsible for. He was given creative control over certain characters. For example, originally, in Shazam! Fury of the Gods, the film was going to end with Hawkman and Cyclone recruiting Shazam to the Justice Society. However, because Dwayne Johnson seems to have a hatred for Shazam, he refused to let those characters be in the film. At this point in time, he was having meetings with David Zaslav about what the DCEU could look like. And it seems the studio was listening to him. I mean, they brought back Henry Cavill and took Hawkman and Cyclone out of Shazam 2 just because Dwayne Johnson said to. Dwayne Johnson even starred in DC League of Super Pets, a film that directly ends with a tease for Black Adam. A film that wasn't canon to Super Pets. Dwayne Johnson even played Black Adam and Black Adam's dog in that film. So there's a scene where Dwayne Johnson dog talks to another Dwayne Johnson dog while Dwayne Johnson watches over them. Everything was coming up rock. But then, Black Adam came out, and Dwayne Johnson's plans hit rock bottom. Black Adam would be a critical and box office failure, and this pretty much annihilated plans for Black Adam 2, and a reboot to the DCU was announced. Now, Dwayne Johnson has come out and said he didn't try and take over the DCEU, but he also directly says that he did discuss the future of the DCEU and how he and Zaslov can build it together, so... There's a good chance that he probably did try and take it over. The Ayer Cut So The Squad 2016 is not director David Ayer's vision. You see, after the release of Batman v Superman, Warner Bros. got cold feet about Ayer's film and so hired a trailer company called Trailer Park to edit the film and make it more fun, with reshoots also done to try and lighten the film's mood. This was the film we ended up getting, and David Ayer was furious, as his vision was completely tampered with. Because of this, fans, and even David Ayer himself, began campaigning for the Ayer Cut basically for Warner Bros. to release Ayer's vision in a similar manner to the Snyder Cut. This is probably never gonna happen, though. For quite a while, it didn't seem like this would happen at all. That was until David Ayer claimed James Gunn told him that they would release it when the time was right. But half a year later, David Ayer would then make an announcement and say that he's given up on the Ayer Cut, and he doesn't think it will ever be released. So what was this original version of the film going to look like? Well, for one, we know that the film was going to be a lot more serious and somber. Most of the film's characters would have also received a lot more development. 
Joker would have appeared in the film a lot more. In fact, Joker would have been seen flat out abusing Harley. There would be no licensed tracks in the film, and Harley would have worn a wedding dress at one point. Enchantress would have also taken over the minds of Katana and Killer Croc. Harley and Deadshot would have also hooked up, and Diablo would have survived the film. Confusion over what's canon. So the DCEU had a bit of a continuity problem. And it all begins with Aquaman. You see, around the release of Aquaman, Jason Momoa explained in an interview that Aquaman follows the events of the Snyder Cut, not the 2017 Justice League film. Obviously, people ignored him, and the film was considered a follow-up to Justice League. But then, when the Snyder Cut was released, it was described as being non-canon to the DCEU, with the 2017 film still being the canon version of events. But this decision was changed with the release of The Flash, as events from the Snyder Cut are not only referenced in the film, but also flat out shown. But then, there's the issue of Blue Beetle, which people claim isn't canon to the DCEU. But it is. It's been directly said that it is. Though Blue Beetle's actor will continue to portray the character in the DCU, the DCU Blue Beetle will be a different version of the character, with a similar backstory to the film. But the film itself isn't canon. So yeah, the DCU was a little bit confusing. Deleted Scenes as with all films, the DCEU has its fair share of scenes deleted from the films set in that universe. Now, I've already talked about a ton of DCEU-related deleted scenes. Here's a huge list of them. Pause the video if you want to read them all. So if you're wondering why these scenes won't be mentioned in the video, it's because I talked about them in other videos. Also, because I gotta go over 16 different projects, I'm only going to do three scenes per movie. For Man of Steel, originally the battle sequence on Krypton was going to be much longer. A scene in which Superman is seen leaving a church with a priest where he says, I won't betray them, was cut from the film. For Batman v Superman, most of this film's deleted scenes were added back into the film with the Ultimate Edition. Some of these scenes include a longer version of Clark's funeral, more flashback scenes set during the final battle of Man of Steel, and Caesar Santos' murder. In Bye Bye Man Yourself Squad, Slipknot, the man who could climb anything, was originally going to have an introduction scene. There was also going to be a scene in which Katana would betray the team after being brainwashed by Enchantress. And finally, Joker was going to be present during the final battle, where he would make a deal with Enchantress and work for her. As for Wonder Woman, I actually talked about all the deleted scenes we know about this film in the Wonder Woman Iceberg. As for Justice League 2017, I talked about all the film's known deleted scenes in The Flash, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman Icebergs. For Aquaman, originally, there was going to be a scene where Aquaman starts a prison riot and fights prison shark guards. There was also going to be a flashback scene where Aquaman, as a kid, explores a shipwreck where he discovers that he can breathe underwater. And finally, there was cut dialogue where Aquaman says, That was the worst pep talk ever. Next for Shazam, originally, there was going to be a scene in which Shazam and his family build a new Christmas tree. There was also a scene in which Shazam has a tea party with Darla that was cut. And finally, a scene in which Freddy flies up to a plane was cut. For Birds of Prey, originally, there was going to be a scene in which Black Mask plays hide-and-seek with his henchmen in his apartment. Originally, the film's final action sequence would be set in a hotel instead of a funhouse. And finally, Huntress was going to look a lot more like her comic counterpart at one point. As for Wonder Woman 1984, I talked about all this film's known deleted scenes in the Wonder Woman Iceberg. As for the Snyder Cut, I talked about all the deleted scenes we know about this film in the Batman Iceberg. 
In the 2021 Squad film, there was originally a scene where Rick Flagg explains that after he insulted Amanda Waller's blouse, she sent him to Corto Maltes to die. Originally, King Shark was meant to wander off from the group during the club sequence, which would require Ratcatcher to send rats after him. And finally, there was an extended version of Harley Quinn's arrival at Luna's palace that was filmed, where she would order a servant to be hung. As for Peacemaker, an alternate version of the scene where Peacemaker names off a bunch of people who could have been framed was filmed. This version had Peacemaker mentioning Mel Gibson, Elvis Presley, Ronald McDonald, and Super Mario. And originally, Judo Master was supposed to die in Episode 4. However, James Gunn liked the character so much, he had the character survive. As for Black Adam, originally, there would be a scene in which Black Adam flies over a desert where he's confronted by two jets. In retaliation, he destroys one of them. There was also supposed to be a scene where Dr. Fate and Hawkman would have a meeting in the Hawkman estate about how to defeat Black Adam. And finally, there was supposed to be a second after credit scene that would tease Dr. Fate's survival. In Shazam! Fury of the Gods, originally, there was going to be a scene where Mary visits a friend's party. There were also plans for a scene where Pedro would parody stereotypical superhero landings. And most famously, there was originally a scene where Shazam says, I just threw a truck at a dragon. I love my life. This line of dialogue was actually cut a while before its appearance in one of the film's trailers. As for The Flash, originally, there would be a scene in which Flash finds Supergirl's suit, to which he asks his Flashpoint counterpart in Batman if Superman has boobs. There was also supposed to be a scene where Flashpoint Barry tries on samurai armor, and finally, there was supposed to be a scene where Michael Keaton Batman tells Barry that he used to use an electric chair during his early crime-fighting days. As for Blue Beetle, surprisingly, there isn't any deleted scenes we know about this film yet. As for Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom, supposedly two scenes featuring Mira were cut from the film, one of which was a romantic scene between her and Aquaman. Originally, Volca was going to appear in the film. However, due to scheduling conflicts, Willem Dafoe couldn't make it to set, so the character was written out of the film. There's also one major deleted scene, but I think it deserves its own entry, so I'll come back to it later. New Gods. In March 2018, Ava DuVernay pitched a New Gods film to Warner Bros. They liked the pitch, so she was hired to direct the film, with Cario Salem hired as the film's writer. However, he would eventually be replaced with Tom King in May of 2019, and for nearly two years, the pair would work on the film. That was until April 2021, where it was announced that the New Gods film was cancelled due to Warner Bros. having too many films in development. So what was the New Gods film going to be about? Well, besides it obviously being about the New Gods and Darkseid, there's not much known about this film, outside of it being heavily inspired by Jack Kirby's time writing the characters. And we do know about a few characters who were planned to be in the film, like Big Barda, Mr. Miracle, High Father, Granny Goodness, All Widow, and the Female Furies. Margot Robbie hated Harley's costume. Harley Quinn's design in the 2016 David Ayer film squad has since become a pretty popular look for the character. Probably because it's pretty hot. Like, let's not kid ourselves here. That's the reason why this design exists. Yes, I know the in-universe reason is that Harley wanted to wear something fun, but come on. And sure, it's a pretty attractive design, but Margot Robbie herself was not a fan of it. Because, well, she had to wear it. With her stating, quote, You go to a scene where you're hosed down and soaking wet in a white t-shirt. It's so clingy and you're self-conscious about it. You need to act like you think you're really gorgeous. 
and you need to be completely convinced with that because everyone else will believe it too. She's also mentions how this design was also a pain to get on, saying, quote, Honestly, for me, as Harley, at least, the more skin showing, the longer it takes in hair and makeup, because she's got, you know, white skin and a million tattoos. So if anything outside, God, the scenes I don't even have the jacket on, that's an extra 20 minutes in the makeup trailer. And finally, she's also said this about how she's okay with showing some skin under certain circumstances, saying, quote, If I see it in a character that's using it as a weapon or a tool, or doing it intentionally. Like in Wolf of Wall Street, she's wearing a short dress for a reason. She knows it's her currency. She's going to get her own. That feels empowering. When it's used in a way that there isn't that self-awareness, then it does feel like you're kind of taking advantage. And then I don't really vibe with it. Side note, not saying you should feel guilty about like liking the design or not. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. I just thought this was like a important thing to know about the design. DC merch is canon. So this is a pretty straight to the point entry. In Shazam, it's directly shown that action figures of Superman, Batman, Cyborg, and Wonder Woman all exist in the DCEU. Kinda weird that Batman has action figures in the DCEU, since, uh, you know, he brands people. To wrap this entry up, it was confirmed by director David F. Sandberg that all of these figures were donated to charities after filming. Very based. Green Lantern Corps movie. At San Diego Comic-Con 2015, it was announced that a film centered on the Green Lantern Corps would be released in June of 2020, and would be set in the DCEU. It was eventually revealed that the film was going to be written by Justin Rhodes and David S. Goyer, and instead of the film being about just one Green Lantern, it would star two, Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart. And for almost four years, development didn't really happen. In fact, in June 2019, it was revealed by Christopher McQuarrie that Green Lantern Corps hadn't had any progress made on it. There was another Green Lantern project announced in October 2019, also set in the DCEU, but that wasn't related to this film, so I'll talk about it a bit later. The last update for the film was in November of 2019, where it was reported in a Variety article that Jeff Johns, who was originally serving as an executive producer, was now writing the film, and was expected to hand in his script by the end of the year. And uh, that's it. No, really, that's it. That's all we know about it. As for the film's plot and casting, nothing is known outside of rumors. Uh, for example, there were some rumors that Kyle Rayner might have also been in the film, but it was never confirmed. And as for casting, Tyrese Gibson was fan campaigning for a while about being Jon Stewart, and there were rumors about Army Hammer playing Hal Jordan, but no official casting was ever announced. Jared Leto is not good. During filming of the 2016 Avengers Endgame Yourself Squad, Jared Leto would be a weirdo. You see, he was inspired by Heath Ledger and decided not to break character while filming. Some of the things he did during filming included sending a live rat to Margot Robbie, sending every single one of his co-stars a dead pig, used condoms and anal beads, he only responded to people when they called him Mr. J, and groped and kissed actor Ike Barinholtz. Jared Leto claimed that he did all these things to break down the walls between the actors and add an element of surprise to the set. Although, in 2021, Jared Leto went back on many of these claims, saying that besides the live rat he sent to Margot Robbie, nothing else that was said about him was true. So, did he do all these things? No idea. But what I do know, or think, I guess, is that uh, Jared Leto is probably not a very good person. The original Justice League trilogy plans... So Justice League was initially announced as a two-part film. However, the second part would get delayed and then cancelled. 
And of course, Zack Snyder left the project in 2017, so the Justice League film we got wasn't his vision. We would eventually get his vision in 2021 with the Snyder Cut, where it would also be revealed that Snyder hadn't planned on his story taking place over the course of two Justice League films, but three of them. And thanks to Zack Snyder, we know a little bit about what his Justice League trilogy was going to look like. I'm not going to go over everything because that would take forever, so here's just some of the more major details. Lex Luthor would have created the Injustice League, which would have included Black Manta, Ocean Master, Captain Cold, Dr. Poison, who's somehow alive, and an elderly Riddler. Lex wanted to solve the anti-life equation and would have had Riddler try and solve it. After being resurrected, Superman would be a lot more optimistic and nicer. A more traditional Superman. But this was meant to be a bad thing. Showing that Superman thought of Clark Kent as his secret identity. This would have left him vulnerable to Darkseid's manipulations, which would lead into the nightmare stuff. Lex, along with the Injustice League, would bring Darkseid to Earth, where together they would defeat the Justice League, with Dr. Poison releasing a poison that kills every single Amazon in the world, including Wonder Woman. Black Manta would then kill Aquaman, and a cyborg would nearly be killed by Captain Cold. Lois Lane would have then been killed by Darkseid, and it would have been revealed that she was pregnant with Bruce Wayne's kid. This completely breaks Superman, and he kills Lex Luthor, taking his place at Darkseid's side. Years later, Batman leads a group of survivors fighting against Superman and Darkseid. This group consists of Batman, Mira, Flash, Cyborg, Deadshot, and Hal Jordan Green Lantern. In case you're wondering about Deathstroke, Harley Quinn, and Joker, Deathstroke and Joker were not in the original story of these films. The nightmare scene in the Snyder Cut was actually filmed for that movie, not the 2017 film. So by the time this was being filmed, Snyder had changed his mind about certain things. And as for Harley, well, I don't think she was ever part of the Resistance. I think she may have been, but she's dead by the time of the Nightmare Flash Forward, so whatever, doesn't matter. Anyways, the Resistance enacts a plan to send Flash back in time and warn Batman about how he needs to keep Lois Lane alive. Basically, that scene from BVS. During this plan, Mira, Green Lantern, Aquaman, and Deadshot would all be killed. But Flash is successful in doing this, and now, Batman saves Lois Lane. Superman and the Justice League then create an army to defeat Darkseid, which also consists of the Green Lantern Corps. Cyborg is able to destroy the Mother Boxes, and Batman sacrifices his life to kill Darkseid. In the aftermath, Wonder Woman becomes Queen of the Amazons. Cyborg is able to recreate his human body using technology, and Superman and Lois name their kid Bruce. The story would then jump forward 20 years, where Bruce Jr. is brought to the Batcave by Lois Lane, where she basically tells him, You gotta be Batman. It's your biological dad's legacy. And uh, that's it. That's the end. Kinda. That was the original version of these films. Rewrites of the films would have cut some of these plot points, like the Batman, Lois Lane, and Superman love triangle, and Batman would actually end up dying in the second Justice League film. And like I mentioned earlier, Deathstroke and Joker would now be part of the Nightmare Resistance. Regardless if you like these plans or not, you gotta admit, these films would have been interesting. We'll return with more Justice League. Join the world's greatest superheroes on the Game Boy Advance as they battle for truth, justice, and freedom against the Injustice League. Rated everyone. We now return to Justice League. Shazam in Titans. 
In the season four episode of Titans, Dude, Where's My Gar, Beast Boy gets transported through the multiverse. During the sequence in which he travels the multiverse, various other DC continuities are seen via archive footage, like the Arrowverse in that Swamp Thing show. Also, various characters from other continuities are heard via archive audio, like Joker from Joker 2019, Dr. Fate from Smallville, Harley Quinn from Harley Quinn, Beast Boy from Teen Titans Go!, Joker from the Burdenverse, and Pa Kent from Superman 1978. And one of these continuities is the DCEU. As footage from Shazam is seen, and audio from Asher Angel as Billy Batson is heard. The original Flash Cameo Fest. So the controversial multiverse cameo sequence in The Flash was originally going to be even more controversial. They originally planned for Linda Carter's Wonder Woman, Joker and Penguin from the 1960s Batman series, Jor-El from Superman 1978, and Grant Gustin's Flash from the Arrowverse to all show up. And all of them, except for Grant Gustin, would have been CGI recreations. All of these cameos would be cut from the film, minus Joker from the 60s series, as while he doesn't appear, you can still hear him via archive audio. The World Needs Heroes so this is genuinely one of the most poorly aged videos ever made by a big company. In February of 2022, a video titled DC The World Needs Heroes was released on Warner Bros. official YouTube channel. It was a teaser that promised that 2022 would be the year of DC, and showed footage of the Batman, The Flash, Black Adam, and Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom. People were pretty excited, but, um, like I said, didn't age very well. First off, out of these four projects, only two of them ended up being released in 2022. And sure, the Batman made a ton of money and received critical acclaim, but Black Adam was a box office bomb and wasn't a big hit critically. Not only that, but Batgirl was flat out cancelled in 2022, destroying a lot of people's trust in Warner Bros. and DC. And when The Flash did come out, it was an insane box office bomb, and received a mixed critical reception. As for Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, it received a mixed critical reception and came out nearly two years after this video was released. I'm genuinely surprised Warner Bros. hasn't deleted this video yet. Imagine a more accurate 2022 DC Projects hype video. It would be like the biggest mixed bag ever. Original casting. So there's been plenty of actors who were considered for roles, offered roles, or auditioned for roles in the DCEU. Here's a list of a bunch of actors who almost played characters in the DCEU. Except for these characters, as I've already gone over actors who almost played them in other videos. And Aquaman and Cyborg. For some reason, there's just like no casting information out there about these two. There are rumors that John Boyega may have been offered the role of Cyborg, but there's like no actual evidence for that. I, I think it's just complete bull. Anyways, as for Batman, Jason Momoa, Josh Brolin, John Hamm, Scott Adkins, Anson Mount, Luke Evans, Orlando Bloom, and Matthias Schoenarts were considered for the role. For Shazam, John Cena, Parker Young, Zane Holtz, Jake McDorman, and Derek Theller were all considered. For Harley Quinn, Emma Stone, Mary Elizabeth Winston, Alison Brie, Olivia Wilde, Emma Watson, Emily Browning, Emma Roberts, Amanda Seyfried, and Evan Rachel Wood were considered for the role. For Peacemaker, Dave Bautista was considered for the role. As for Rick Flagg, Tom Hardy, Mark Wahlberg, Carl Urban, Luke Evans, Bradley Cooper, John Berthnall, Tom Cruise, Jason Clark, and Jake Gyllenhaal were all considered for the role. As for Alfred, Timothy Dalton was considered for the role. As for Supergirl, Rachel Zegler and Bruno Marquezine were considered for the role. For Hawkman, Alexander Skarsgård was considered for the role. 
As for Jimmy Olsen, Scoot McNary and Jesse Eisenberg were considered for the role. For Enchantress, Megan Fox, Amelia Clark, Christian Ritter, Brie Larson, Alexandra Daddario, Alicia Vikander, Troyan Belisario, and Shailene Woodley were considered for the role. As for Commissioner Gordon, Brian Cranston was considered for the role. For Amanda Waller, Oprah Winfrey, Kerry Washington, and Octavia Spencer were considered for the role. For Joker, Ryan Gosling, Matt Smith, Mark Strong, and Charlotte Copley were considered for the role. For Black Mask, Hugh Grant, Charlotte Copley, Sam Rockwell, and Joel Egerton were considered for the role. For Ocean Master, Carl Urban was considered for the role. As for Deadshot, Idris Elba, Robert Pattinson, Oscar Isaac, Matt Damon, John Hamm, Brad Pitt, Johnny Depp, Daniel Craig, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Keanu Reeves were considered for the role. For Black Canary, Jodie Comer, Vanessa Kirby, Blake Lively, Janelle Monet, and Zoe Kravitz were considered for the role. For Fiora, Gal Gadot was considered for the role. For The Huntress, Alexandria Daddario, Margaret Qualley, Sophia Batella, and Kristen Milioti were considered for the role. For Ratcatcher 2, Isabella Merced was considered for the role. For Victoria Cord, Sharon Stone was considered for the role. And finally, for Sophie Song, Maggie Q was considered for the role. Black Adam and the Seven Deadly Sins In Shazam, it's mentioned that Black Adam unleashed the seven deadly sins in ancient times to get revenge on his enemies. And the sins killed nearly the entire Council of Wizards. Black Adam isn't named, but it's very much implied that it was him. However, in Black Adam, not only are the Seven Deadly Sins not even mentioned, it's shown that Black Adam kills the Wizards, not the Seven Deadly Sins. So, what happened? Well, I guess you could headcanon this and say that the Sins were helping Black Adam off-screen, but that's a bit of a stretch. This is probably the biggest retcon in the entirety of the DCEU which probably stems from Dwayne Johnson doing everything in his power to keep Black Adam separate from Shazam. That or Dwayne Johnson not wanting Black Adam to be responsible for the deaths of millions and several civilizations. Solo Harley Quinn Film After the release of The Squad 2016, most people were in agreement that the standout character of the film was Harley Quinn. And so, Warner Bros. decided to capitalize on this by announcing multiple Harley Quinn projects, including a Gotham City Sirens film and a Birds of Prey film that would feature Harley. Now, Gotham City Sirens wouldn't ever release, and neither would any other Harley Quinn-focused project. One of these projects was a Harley Quinn solo film where she'd be the lead star. Now, for a while, this film's existence was a bit of a mystery, because Christina Hodson was tasked with writing the film, and she would end up being the writer of Birds of Prey, which was a kind of Harley Quinn solo project, with the Birds of Prey taking a bit of a backseat. So for a while, people just assumed that this Harley Quinn solo project became Birds of Prey. However, in September of 2023, Gail Simone revealed that she had been part of a pitch meeting with Warner Bros. about a Harley Quinn solo film. And since she said this quite some time after Birds of Prey was released, she's more than likely not talking about that film. So at one point in time, there was a Harley Quinn solo film in development. The Flash 2 In October of 2022, it was reported that a sequel to The Flash had already been completely written by David Leslie Johnson McGoldrick. However, the sequel hadn't been greenlit yet, as DC and Warner Bros. were holding on to the script to see if The Flash was a success. If The Flash was a success, they would greenlight the sequel. And, uh, 
The Flash was the complete opposite of a success, so, uh, yeah, this film is never happening. Especially since the DCEU is now dead. Batman's appearance in The Lost Kingdom. So originally, Batman, or Bruce Wayne, because he wouldn't be in the Batman costume, was gonna show up for a small cameo in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Michael Keaton actually filmed the scene because, if you remember, the original plan was that after The Flash, Michael Keaton would continue to play Batman in the DCEU. However, at one point in time, The Flash was delayed so it would release after Aquaman 2. Because of this, in 2022, reshoots were filmed where Ben Affleck returned to play Bruce Wayne one more time, and basically filmed the exact same scene Michael Keaton did. But then, Aquaman 2 was delayed, so it would release after The Flash. So it was decided that the film would use the Michael Keaton version of the scene. But then, because of the DCU reboot, The Flash's ending was completely changed to the joke ending featuring George Clooney. And so, the entire Bruce Wayne scene was cut from the film. Hopefully, both the Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck scenes will be released one day. Damn, after Homecoming, Michael Keaton can't really catch a break with superhero films. He's in Morbius, Batgirl gets cancelled, The Flash bombs, and his seat in Aquaman 2 is cut. Krypton? In October of 2014, it was announced that David S. Goyer was developing a prequel series to Man of Steel that would take place on Krypton 200 years before the beginning of the DCEU. However, during development of the show, it was decided to remove all of the DCEU references and connections. So when the show was released in early 2018, it had nothing to do with the DCEU. However, elements of the original vision of the show did remain. For starters, the technology featured in Krypton is very similar to the technology seen in Man of Steel. Notably, the command keys. Also, the original vision of the show focused on Segel, Superman's grandfather. This would be kept for the show we got. David S. Goyer would even stay connected to the series. The last thing I'll mention is that in 2015, David S. Goyer revealed that the show was going to use elements of Krypton they had to cut from Man of Steel. It's unknown if the Krypton we ended up getting had these cut elements, but I thought it'd be worth mentioning. Comics Like the MCU, the DCEU has its fair share of comics that take place between the films. However, unlike the MCU, where it's pretty obvious the comics aren't canon, or at least most of the comics aren't canon, most of the DCEU comics seem to be canon, as very few of them actually conflict with the film's canon. This is most likely because nothing really significant happens in them. They're mostly short stories where a superhero like Batman or Wonder Woman fights some bad guys in a quick one-off fight. In fact, a lot of the comics don't even focus on the heroes, but civilians living in the DCEU reacting and interacting with DCEU characters. These comics were created as promotions, so they're usually not very long. In fact, the one-shot, Upstairs Downstairs, was released via codes given out in Dorito bags. There was even a series of comics written by Adam Schlagman titled Mercedes-Benz Presents Justice League, and these comics were released via Instagram. This one is probably not canon. There are also a few motion comics released, like one focused on the Shazam family. Probably the most interesting thing about these comics is that sometimes they introduce characters into the DCEU that aren't in the films. For example, the villain Gentleman Ghost shows up in a Black Adam prequel comic. Dr. Cyber shows up in a Wonder Woman tie-in comic, and Firefly is introduced in a Batman v Superman comic. And unlike the MCU, which has pretty much stopped making comics, 
the DCEU continued to make comic tie-ins all the way until the very end, with the very last comic being released on January 23rd, 2024, which technically makes this the last DCEU content ever made. Although, by this point, it became very clear that DC had lost the rights to use the likenesses of various actors. For example, here's Wonder Woman in Flash's last canonical appearance in the DCEU. Yeah, that's totally Gal Gadot and Ezra Miller. Side note, did you know that they gave the character Senator Finch her own comic? Who was hyped for this? Zatanna film. In March of 2021, it was revealed that DC and Warner Bros. were working on a film based on the character Zatanna that would be set in the DCEU and released exclusively on HBO Max. However, this film didn't actually last very long, as while Emerald Fennel was hired as the film's writer, and J.J. Abrams was brought in to produce the film, in October of 2022, it was revealed the film was cancelled. Although, it was also said that DC and Warner Bros. were shopping the film around to other streaming services. However, it's been well over a year since then, and no update has come out. So it looks like this film is dead. And even if it does end up happening, it won't be related to the DCEU. Deadshot Film In December of 2016, it was announced that the 2016 Avengers Endgame Yourself Squad film was going to receive a spin-off film focused on Deadshot, with Will Smith reprising the role. However, development on the film never really went anywhere and so for years, many figured that it was cancelled. But then, in 2019, it was reported that Deadshot would be recasted in James Gunn's 2021 Squad film, with Idris Elba taking over the role. But then, James Gunn took Deadshot out of the film and replaced him with Bloodsport. He did this in order to leave the door open for Will Smith to reprise the role in that Deadshot solo film, so it seemed the film wasn't actually dead. It was just in development hell, most likely caused in part by Will Smith's busy schedule. But uh, yeah, the DCEU is now dead, so this film is not happening. Black Canary Film In August of 2021, it was announced that a spin-off film to Birds of Prey was being created as an HBO Max exclusive film. This film would be a Black Canary solo film, with Journey Smollett reprising her role. It was also announced that Misha Green was writing the film, and the film continued development up until the announcement was made that the DCEU would be ending. And, uh, that's it. Yeah, this is a short entry, but there really wasn't anything ever revealed about this film. There were rumors that Green Arrow could have appeared, but they were just rumors. Also, it is possible that this film could have connected with the cancelled Batgirl film, since there were pieces of graffiti on the set of Batgirl that teased Black Canary. But these were probably just Easter eggs, I don't think Leslie Grace's Batgirl was going to show up in the Black Canary film. Jason Todd vs. Dick Grayson So in Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, it's revealed that Robin used to exist in the DCEU, but was killed by Joker and Harley Quinn. Now everyone immediately jumped to the conclusion that this was Jason Todd as Jason's death in the comics is an extremely famous storyline. However, it turns out that's not the case. According to Zack Snyder, this Robin was Dick Grayson, the first Robin, who would eventually become a Nightwing. However, this might not be true. You see, while it was 100% Zack Snyder's intention for Dick Grayson to be the Robin who was killed, at the end of the day, it's never said in the films or any piece of official media that this was Dick Grayson. And because of this, 
it seems that Warner Bros. and DC were just kind of ignoring Snyder's comments, because they greenlit a Nightwing movie. So if that film actually came out, Warner Bros. and or DC would probably just retcon the dead Robin as being Jason Todd. It wouldn't even be that hard, because Jason Todd already exists in the DCEU. More on that in a little bit. Nightwing Movie In February of 2017, it was announced that a film set in the DCEU focused on Nightwing was in development, with Chris McKay hired as the film's director and Bill Dubuque as the film's writer. And this film never really got anywhere. The script for the film was completed in 2018. However, the film wouldn't develop any further, with it being revealed in June of 2021 by Chris McKay that the film had been delayed due to DC and Warner Bros. having other priorities. And by August of 2023, it was confirmed that the Nightwing film was dead. So what was this film going to be about? Well, no idea. Outside of it obviously being about Nightwing, and probably taking place in either Bloodhaven or Gotham City, there's nothing known about this film outside of rumors and its potential budget. The biggest rumor was that Dylan O'Brien was in talks to play Nightwing, and the film's budget was said to be below $100 million. Luckily, there is still a chance that a Chris McKay Nightwing film could happen, just obviously not set in the DCEU. In 2023, McKay said in an interview that he hopes to be able to make the Nightwing film in the DCU. Whether or not this ends up happening, we'll have to wait and see. Harley Quinn vs. The Joker In July of 2017, it was announced that yet another Harley Quinn spin-off project was in development, this one being titled Harley Quinn vs. The Joker. Written by Glenn Ficarra and John Requa, the film was heavily inspired by the films Bad Santa and This Is Us. And upon finishing the script, Warner Bros. took a look at it and didn't really like it. And in February of 2019, it was announced that this film was cancelled. So what was this film going to be about? Well, it was going to take place post Birds of Prey, so it can be assumed that Harley was going to go after Joker, or vice versa. Besides that, nothing else is known. The Flash's CGI was supposed to look bad. The one thing that everyone seems to agree on about The Flash is that the CGI was, at times, really, really bad. And so, in an attempt at defending the film, director Andy Muschietti said in an interview that the CGI was supposed to look bad. Well, he kinda said that. In an interview with io9, Muschietti talked about why the CGI babies looked so... so bad. Saying, quote, the idea, of course, is we are in the perspective of the Flash. Everything is distorted in terms of lights and textures. We enter this water world, which is basically being in Barry's POV. It was part of the design, so if it looks a little weird to you, that was intended. So while he doesn't say it's supposed to look bad, he says it's meant to look weird. Honestly, I don't buy this. I'm sure there's some element of truth there, but I don't know, man. This just comes off as him trying to desperately defend the film. Original Peacemaker Season 2 After Peacemaker received critical acclaim, a Season 2 was announced to be in development in February of 2022. However, when the DCU reboot was announced, many people were worried that the second season of Peacemaker was cancelled. But luckily, it was revealed by James Gunn that it wasn't, though it was being delayed due to his commitment to both Superman Legacy and Waller. He also confirmed that Season 2 would take place in the DCU. So, uh, how is that gonna work? Well, as of right now, we don't really know. 
We do know that James Gunn has said that the change in universe will be addressed in the show. So what was Peacemaker Season 2, set in the DCEU, gonna look like? Well, once again, we don't really have any idea. Because it wasn't actually being written until after the DCU announcement was made. My guess is that the Season 2 we're gonna get would have been exactly the same as the Season 2 we were gonna get when it was meant to be in the DCEU. The only things changing being the acknowledgement of the universe changing, and probably some easter eggs and references. But we won't know until Season 2 comes out. The Amanda Waller Show So this is gonna be a real quick one. In May of 2022, it was announced that a series about Amanda Waller was in development, and it would take place in the DCEU. However, in January of 2023, it was revealed that the series, revealed to be titled Waller, would instead be taking place in the DCU, and not the DCEU. Because Waller isn't out yet, and because its time being developed for the DCEU was so short, it's unknown how much the show changed once it was decided to be in the DCU. Deathstroke Film in October of 2017, it was announced that a Deathstroke film set in the DCEU was in development, with Gareth Evans being hired as the film's director and writer. However, weirdly enough, he wasn't actually officially attached to the project. While it was announced that he was, in October of 2018, he revealed that he hadn't been contractually tied to the project yet. And in April of 2020, Gareth Evans revealed that not only had the film been delayed, he was no longer involved with the film at all. We finally got an answer as to why the film's development was taking so long in March of 2021, where Joe Mangaliello revealed that because of executive changes within Warner Bros that happened in late 2017 and early 2018, the Deathstroke film had been put on the back burner. But not only that, he also confirmed the film was cancelled. So what was this film going to be about? Well, it was going to be a prequel film that would have served as an origin story. The film was also going to have a very dark tone to it, being inspired by Korean noir films. It was also revealed the film's budget was going to be around $40 million. And that's all we know. The Original Squad 2 In March 2016, before the This Is Why I Make This Joke Every Time I Talk About This Team Squad film came out, it was announced that a sequel was already in development, with David Ayer returning to direct. And it was revealed that in March 2017, that Adam Kozad was brought on to write the sequel. Although, this didn't last very long, as in July 2017, he was replaced with Zach Penn. And shortly after this, David Ayer left the project. He was quickly replaced with Gavin O'Connor, and by September 2018, the script was done. But then O'Connor left the project because Warner Bros. rejected the script, because it was apparently too similar to Birds of Prey. Anyways, then James Gunn was brought on board, and the rest is history. So what was this original version of Bye Bye Man Yourself Squad 2 gonna look like? Well, we know a little bit about what it may have looked like. Shortly after the original film's release, Karen Fukuhara, Katana's actress, began talking about how in the sequel, she hoped they would be able to delve into Katana's backstory, or even give her her own solo spin-off film. David Ayer was also pushing for the film to be rated R. And uh, that's all we know for Ayer's version of the film. As for the O'Connor script, apparently Black Adam would have been the film's villain, with Dwayne Johnson playing the character. And outside of that, nothing else is known. Static Shock Movie In August of 2020, a film set in the DCEU about the hero Static was announced to be in development, as a potential HBO Max exclusive film. 
and it was soon revealed that Michael B. Jordan and Reginald Hudlin would serve as the film's producers. In March of 2021, it was then announced that Randy McKinnon was brought on to be the film's writer, and in October of 2021, it was announced that the film was still being worked on. And uh, that was it. There wouldn't be an update until December of 2023, where it was revealed by Reginald Hudlin that the film will happen. Not much of an update, but it's something. The fact the movie is apparently still in development means the film is either being reworked into the DCU, or it will be a standalone Elseworld film. Last thing I'll mention is that there are rumors from 2021 Caleb McLaughlin was in discussions about playing Static. Justice League Dark Film In January of 2013, Del Toro pitched a Justice League Dark Film titled Dark Universe to Warner Bros. in DC, and they really liked it. So he was brought on board to direct the film, and the film was confirmed to take place in the DCEU. But then, in June 2015, Del Toro left the project, and he was replaced with Doug Lyman. But then, in May 2017, Doug Lyman left the project. And shortly after he left the project, it was revealed the film was now titled Justice League Dark, and the film wouldn't use Del Toro's script. Instead, Michael Gilio was brought on board to rewrite the film, only for Gerard Johnstone to be brought on board to polish the script. However, in April of 2020, the film was revealed to be cancelled, and in its place, a Justice League Dark HBO Max series was announced to be in development. Inspired by the Netflix MCU shows, Justice League Dark would serve as a culmination of several different shows and films that would introduce the team's members. However, in February of 2023, it was announced that Justice League Dark was again cancelled. Luckily, we do know quite a few things about these cancelled Justice League Dark projects, thanks in part to Del Toro's script being leaked. Del Toro's film would have focused on Constantine, Zatanna, Dead Man, The Spectre, Swamp Thing, E. Trigon the Demon, and Madame Xanadu. And together, they would battle the Floronic Man and Clarion the Witch Boy. Turns out, the Floronic Man wants to resurrect Gugulana, an enormous bowl monster that can destroy civilizations. Other characters that would appear in the film include The Phantom Stranger, Pandora, and Black Orchid. Del Toro also at one point said that he was considering Matt Ryans to play Constantine. However, this would be a different version of the character than the Arrowverse version Ryans also played. He'll return with more Justice League. New on CartoonNetwork.com. The new Justice League site lets you experience all the action and skills from the life of a superhero. You'll swear you have the vision. Log on and see. We now return to Justice League. Green Lantern 2011. Released in June of 2011, Green Lantern, starring Ryan Reynolds, was not received well, as it was criticized for its poor CGI, script, humor, casting, and overall tone. It also wasn't the biggest hit at the box office. In fact, it was a bit of a box office bomb, losing Warner Bros. $75 million. Now, this film was originally created to be the start of a DC Cinematic Universe. However, because of its critical and financial failures, Warner Bros. abandoned this film, and instead began their DC Cinematic Universe with Man of Steel. Joker Film In June 2018, 
It was announced that a Joker solo film starring Jared Leto was in development. However, it went pretty much nowhere, as less than a year later, in February of 2019, it was announced that the film was cancelled. This was more than likely because of Joker 2019, as having two different solo Joker films set in different continuities would probably confuse general audiences. And that's all we know about this cancelled film. Why were the 11th Street Kids working under the Justice Society? So after the events of Peacemaker, Hardcore and Economos are seen working for the Justice Society in both Black Adam and Shazam! Fury of the Gods. This has led many to wonder, including James Gunn, why the 11th Street Kids were working for the Justice Society after the events of Peacemaker. Well, I have a theory as to what's going on. After the events of Peacemaker, the Justice Society learned about their heroic actions, stopping the butterflies. So they decided to step in and save Economos and Hardcore from going to jail, because after Amanda Waller's daughter leaked all of Waller's secrets to the press, now pretty much everyone knows that Hardcore and Economos took part in Task Force X. So technically, they're criminals. And since Waller probably wouldn't care if they got sent to jail or not, it was up to the Justice Society to save them by offering them jobs. Like I said though, this is just a theory. It's not confirmed, and honestly, it's probably not even close to being correct. Two Doomsdays So Doomsday in the DCEU is a bit controversial. Some like the take on the character, while others absolutely hate him, not only because of how different his origin is from his comic counterpart, but also his design. But two years after the film's release in 2018, Zack Snyder revealed that the Doomsday introduced in BVS wasn't the real Doomsday, and that the real Doomsday is still out there in the DCEU. This was actually teased in the Man of Steel Blu-ray, where you can find an easter egg referencing Doomsday. Apparently this real Doomsday is the one who destroyed the Kryptonian moon featured in Man of Steel briefly. So uh, it's pretty neat that Doomsday is still alive in the DCEU, although we're never gonna see him, so it doesn't really matter. In fact, strangely, Doomsday is never mentioned in the Justice League trilogy plans. And we know that Justice League 3 was going to be the end of Zack Snyder's DC story, so... Were we ever going to see the real Doomsday? The original Cassandra Cain So Cassandra Cain in the DCEU is basically just Cassandra Cain in name only. She's arguably the character that's changed the most from the comics. And fans of the character weren't happy as Cassandra Cain is a very popular character, and once she was announced to be in the movie, fans were pretty hyped to see her on the big screen, only to be completely let down once the film came out. Many have blamed director Kathy Yan for this decision. However, they're wrong. As revealed by Gail Simone in July of 2021, Kathy Yan and the rest of the team behind the film wanted a comics-accurate Cassandra Cain. However, for some reason, Warner Bros. refused to let them do that. If I had to make a guess as to why they refused, it might be because around the time of Birds of Prey's development, Warner Bros. announced a Batgirl film, and since Cassandra Cain has been Batgirl in the past, maybe they were worried that general audiences would be confused by her and Barbara Gordon. If my theory's correct, then that's a really dumb concern. Because outside of both being Batgirl at one point, Barbara Gordon and Cassandra Cain are extremely different characters. Cut characters. So there's been a ton of characters that were planned to appear in the DCEU, but for one reason or another, didn't make the cut. Here's a list of most of them not counting the insane amount of characters James Gunn considered for the Task Force X film in 2021, because I'm not listing all of these names. 
Side note, all of these characters had to have been scrapped from films that actually came out. So, like, no Nightwing and stuff like that. Originally, the Penguin was going to be the main antagonist of Birds of Prey, but he was cut from the film because he was already planned to appear in The Batman. Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, and Lady Shiva were also considered for Birds of Prey, with Kristen Stewart being looked at to play Barbara. Originally, the Dead King was going to appear as a secondary antagonist in Aquaman. Originally, Catwoman was going to appear in Batman v Superman. However, she wouldn't be wearing the Catwoman costume. She was going to be Batman's ex-wife, and would have been played by Carla Gugino. Originally, Eclipso was going to be the main antagonist of Black Adam. Hawkgirl was also originally going to be in Black Adam as well, as a member of the Justice Society. And finally, originally, Stargirl was going to be in Black Adam as well, and would have been part of the Justice Society. However, she was replaced with Cyclone, because Warner Bros. were concerned audiences would think she's the same Stargirl as the one from the Stargirl TV show. Plastic Man Film in December of 2018, it was announced that a film about Plastic Man set in the DCEU was in development, with Amanda Idaho writing the film, and Bob Shea serving as an executive producer. And for almost exactly two years, there wasn't any updates on the film. That would change in December of 2020 where it would be revealed that Idaho's script was being rewritten by Cat Vasco, and that the film would focus on a female Plastic Man. It was also revealed that the film was going to be an action comedy. And uh, that's it. The film never received any updates after that, and since the DCEU is dead, so is this film. Aquaman, King of Atlantis Aquaman King of Atlantis is a rather strange little miniseries. Similar to how the Guardians of the Galaxy cartoon is a sequel to the 2014 film, but not actually canon to the MCU, Aquaman King of Atlantis was a three-episode miniseries that served as a sequel to the 2018 Aquaman film, but it's not actually canon to the DCEU. None of the actors from the film reprised their roles in the show, and the show was released on HBO Max before being aired on Cartoon Network as a TV film. Airing throughout October of 2021, and being produced by James Wan, the show followed Aquaman, Mira, and Volko battling guys like Ocean Master and The Scavenger. It seems the series received generally decent reviews, but yeah, this isn't canon to the DCEU. Kind of wish it was, just to confuse everyone, but oh well. Harley Quinn gave the cast and crew of the 2016 David Ayer film tattoos. During production on The Squad 2016, Margot Robbie, while fully dressed as Harley Quinn, gave a few of the cast and crew members tattoos. These tattoos being the word Squad. Get it? It sounds kind of like Squad, but it's spelt differently. Anyways, we know that David Ayer, Joel Kinnaman, Karen Fukuhara, Jai Courtney, and Cara Delevingne got the tattoo. However, some of them actually regretted getting this tattoo. Notably, Joel Kinnaman, who revealed in February of 2018 that he regretted getting the tattoo. Funny enough, he didn't actually get this tattoo from Margot Robbie, but instead Will Smith. He said, quote, That was a horrible idea. You know, don't let a 47-year-old man without his reading glasses tattoo you. That is the life lesson. Fun fact, you can actually see his squad tattoo in the 2021 squad film, Charlie. So when the gorilla showed up in the Peacemaker episode, Monkey Dory, many joked that the gorilla was actually Gorilla Grodd. Obviously, this gorilla wasn't Grodd, but surprisingly, this gorilla is actually an adaptation of a comic character. An extremely obscure one. The gorilla in the DCEU is named Charlie. 
and in DC Comics, there was also a gorilla named Charlie. First appearing in Star Spangled War Stories issue 126, released in May of 1966, Sergeant Gorilla, aka Charlie, was a gorilla who lived in a zoo, who joined the US Marines in order to follow his friend, Sergeant Donovan, into World War II. So yeah, Charlie wasn't created for the DCEU. Lobo Movie So a Lobo film has been in development hell since 2009. Though not much development occurred on the film until 2016, when Jason Fuchs was hired as the film's writer. It was also confirmed this film would now be set in the DCEU. In February of 2018, it was revealed that Warner Bros. were trying to get Michael Bay to direct the film. Bay was reportedly interested in directing, but he wanted the film's budget to be lowered considerably as Warner Bros. apparently were using a script for the film that would require the movie to cost $200 million. Sadly, this was the last time that this film was mentioned publicly, so it was cancelled sometime after Michael Bay was brought on board. Although, it seems that we're finally going to get some kind of Lobo project with Jason Momoa in the DCU. Mobile Games so in the Batman Iceberg, I talked about the game The Squad Special Ops, a first-person shooter mobile game created to promote the 2016 film, where you can play as Harley Quinn, Deadshot, and Diablo. But this game is far from the only mobile game created to promote the DCEU. The first mobile game created for the DCEU was simply titled Man of Steel, or Man of Steel Save the World. Released in June of 2013, and developed by Phosphor Game Studio, this game is pretty simple. You play as Superman and battle various Kryptonian enemies, including Zod, Fiora, Nakek, and Carvex. To be completely honest with you, I didn't even know that Carvex was a character until making this video. I just figured she had no name. But yeah, it's a very simple fighting game that features a story mode, challenge mode, and survival mode. You can even unlock six different costumes for Superman to wear. But this wasn't the only Man of Steel mobile game. There was also Man of Steel Heroes Flight, which was basically just an endless runner featuring Superman. Next, there's Batman v Superman, Who Will Win, released in March of 2016 and developed by Playside Studios. It's another endless runner, but this time you can play as either Batman or Superman. It's nothing special, although you can drive the Batmobile in it, so that's cool. Next up, there's Wonder Woman Rise of the Warrior, which was released in May of 2017. This game's weird because you actually play it through Snapchat, not the App Store, although you could also play it on PC. It's another endless runner, but it's different in that you have to tap away enemies and obstacles instead of just dodging them. And finally, I saved the best for last. Kellogg's Man of Steel. Developed by Catapult Marketing and released in April of 2013, this app required players to scan codes on products to unlock filters and special effects you can use in photographs or videos. Yeah, it's pretty cool if you're like 12. And even then, that's stretching it. Oh, and uh, there's also some like Roblox experiences, but I don't really care. Aquaman saved Superman. So this is a fun theory about Man of Steel. After Clark falls into the ocean after saving some oil rig workers and doing some epic Jesus symbolism, he's just floating in the ocean unconscious. Though obviously he doesn't drown and eventually makes it to shore. But some fans have theorized that Aquaman had saved him. Fans theorized this because some whales were nearby so they think that Aquaman ordered these whales to save Superman's life. This theory was pretty popular for a while, until Jason Momoa confirmed the theory in November of 2017, where he said, quote, In Man of Steel, when Henry's on the oil rig, he's holding that up, and then all of a sudden, you see him up on the ocean, kind of floats on the ocean. 
Zack's like, I had Aquaman save him so that they'd get to cross paths at one point. So when Bruce goes, you ever heard of Superman? I have, and we have crossed paths. Although, Zack Snyder himself would later debunk the theory in 2020, where during a Man of Steel watch party, in response to the theory, he said, quote, I don't know, would be cool. So I don't really know what Jason Momoa was talking about. Green Arrow. So in the Peacemaker episode, It's Cow or Never, the very popular DC superhero Green Arrow is mentioned by name, where Peacemaker makes some very bold claims about him being a brony. It's a pretty funny scene that confirms that Green Arrow exists in the DCEU. Except, not really. He does exist in the DCEU, but Peacemaker wasn't the first DCEU project to confirm that. In fact, Oliver Queen has been around in the DCEU since Batman v Superman. You see, as part of a promotional campaign for BVS, DC and Warner Bros. hired the website Wired to host an in-universe article about LexCorp. It's a fun read, but what's interesting is that in this article, Queen Industries is mentioned, and so is Queen Industries' CEO. It can be assumed that this unnamed CEO is actually Oliver Queen, as in the comics, Oliver Queen is the CEO of Queen Industries. Although, granted, his daddy Robert Queen was the CEO before him, so this could be Robert Queen, not Oliver Queen, but I don't know. I like to think this is referring to Oliver. Cancelled Constantine Series In February of 2021, it was announced that Constantine would be getting an HBO Max series with Guy Bolton hired to write the show's pilots, and J.J. Abrams was brought in to serve as an executive producer. However, the show didn't last very long in development, as it was cancelled by September of 2022, as Warner Bros. lost interest in the show and instead wanted to make a sequel to the 2005 Constantine film which might still be happening? Anyways, what was this show going to be about? Well, it was going to have a heavy focus on horror, and Constantine would have been a lot younger than he normally is portrayed. He was also going to be played by a non-white actor, as the show's creators were interested in having the cast be very diverse. The show was also going to take place in London, and would lead into that Justice League Dark project I talked about earlier. The Trench In February of 2019, it was announced that a horror spin-off film to Aquaman was in development, called The Trench. It would focus heavily on the Trench Kingdom featured briefly in Aquaman 2018. James Wan and Peter Saffron were brought in to produce the film, while Aidan Fitzgerald and Noah Gardner were brought in to write the film. Now, a lot of people were confused by this announcement, because while the trench sequence in Aquaman was pretty cool, nobody was sure if a film based on the trench could work. However, it turns out that this film wasn't actually going to be based on the trench kingdom. In October of 2021, James Wan confirmed that the film was actually a Black Manta spin-off film, and they were calling it The Trench to trick audience members. I don't really know why they felt the need to do that, but whatever, I guess. He only revealed this because in April of 2021, it was announced that The Trench, or I guess the Black Manta movie, was cancelled. The original Bye Bye Man Yourself Squad 2021 ending. Originally, the 2021 Squad film was going to have a very depressing ending. According to James Gunn, the original ending would have had the Squad return to Belle Reve after killing Starro. And in response, Amanda Waller would detonate the bomb in Ratcatcher 2's head. Bloodsport would then freak out and Harley would try to calm him down, and basically tell him to let her go. Bloodsport would then shoot Waller in the chest with an explosive bullet. However, she wouldn't die, and Bloodsport would threaten to detonate the bullet if the squad wasn't released. 
James Gunn revealed that he cut this ending because he felt it was way too dark and clashed with the film's tone. Supergirl in Man of Steel So another Man of Steel theory states that the open pod seen on the Kryptonian ship that Clark enters was meant to tease Supergirl. Basically, the idea was that she was on the ship when it crashed, and uh, when it crashed, she got out and uh, went off to do whatever. It's a fun theory, but Zack Snyder himself debunked it. When asked about the theory, Snyder just said that the open pod was something more. And he just let that answer hang around for five years, until May of 2023, where he revealed that whoever was in the Kryptonian pod was related to Ares and Zeus, saying, quote, It's this whole thing with, like, the gods and Ares and Zeus, and whether or not Zeus was really possibly a Kryptonian. So that Wonder Woman's powers... Anyway, you can sort of see where that's going, because, you know, the whole thing of, like, whether or not magic and the gods... There is a version where, like, okay, that's cool, I guess, but there's also the more scientific. You have a mythology built up of, where do gods come from? What is that about? And so, we had played around with that quite a bit. But Warner Bros. in DC refused to let Snyder do this, as this would have meant that Wonder Woman and the Amazons were actually Kryptonians, or at least related to them. So yeah, the open pod wasn't a Supergirl. It was apparently like Zeus or somebody like him. Batman Beyond film? In December of 2022, it was reported that a Batman Beyond style film was in early stages of development. Being it's a Batman Beyond style film, the movie would take place further in the DCEU timeline and feature an elderly Bruce Wayne played by Michael Keaton. The film was being written by Christina Hodson, and development came to an end in December of 2022. It turns out, once James Gunn and Peter Saffron were brought on board to be the heads of DC Studios, they scrapped the film, and shortly afterwards, it was announced that the DCEU was coming to an end with the DCU reboot. As for what the film would have looked like, all we know is that Catwoman would have appeared in the film, and plot points from the original ending of Flash would be carried over into this film. You're probably curious as to why I keep saying a Batman Beyond style film. This is because, apparently, Michael Keaton Batman would have been the main protagonist, meaning that Terry McGinnis wasn't going to star in the film, although he may have been in the film, it's just not confirmed. Green Lantern Corps series? In October of 2019, it was announced that Greg Berletti was working on a Green Lantern HBO Max series set in the DCEU. This show was later revealed to be an anthology-type show, where multiple Green Lanterns and Sinestro Corps members would have their stories told. The show was greenlit for 10 episodes, written by Seth Graham Smith and Mark Guggenheim. However, by October of 2022, the show was only going to focus on Jon Stewart, and Smith left the project. The series would then be revealed to have been reworked into Lanterns, a show that'll take place in the DCU, and will focus on Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart. So what was this DCEU Green Lantern show going to be about? Well, we know that originally, Jon Stewart and Hal Jordan weren't going to be in it, because they were going to star in the DCEU Green Lantern Corps movie. So the show would focus heavily on Guy Gardner, Sinestro, Alan Scott, Kilowog, Jessica Cruz, and Simon Baz as its main characters. Alan Scott's story would be set in the 1940s, where he'd be an FBI agent, who would become the first Green Lantern of Earth. The show would have also explored what it was like being a gay man in the 1940s. And Guy Gardner's story would be set in the 1980s. There was also some casting information revealed, like how Finn Whitrock had been casted as Guy Gardner, and Jeremy Irvine had been hired to play Alan Scott. Cancelled Zack Snyder Justice League Motion Comics? 
In May of 2022, it was announced by the Lightcast podcast that they'd be continuing the Snyder Cut by adapting Snyder's cancelled Justice League sequels as a motion comic series. It was then revealed that Ray Porter, Harry Lennox, Christina Wren, and Richard Citrone would provide the voices for the comic. And best of all, the comic's proceeds would go to the AFSP. What could go wrong? Well, Lightcast revealed some preview drawings for the motion comic, and some fans accused one of the motion comic's artists of tracing art from other artists. And shortly after this controversy, it was announced via Twitter that the project was cancelled. However, this controversy may have not been the only reason why the series was cancelled. As in the tweet, they mention, quote, countless legalities. So there was probably some legal issues with Warner Bros. and or DC about the project. General Zod's Death Backlash Regardless of how you feel about Man of Steel, it's undeniable that the film had some plot elements that irked some fans. The biggest of which had to be General Zod's death, as many people found Superman killing him to be completely against his character. Others have argued that Superman killing Zod was in character, as it showed that Superman was willing to do anything to save even a few people. Some people agreed with this point, but pointed out that this didn't really matter in the end, because Superman and Zod's battle killed a ton of people. Some have also argued that Superman flat-out kills Zod in Superman 2, and nobody cared when that happened, so why does this matter? Side note, I really love the alternate ending films for Superman 2, where Zod gets arrested. Anyways, as for people who were involved with Superman media, their opinions were equally as mixed. Grant Morrison said they weren't really a fan of Superman killing Zod. Artist Neil Adams and writer Mark Wade expressed similar opinions, while artists and writers Jim Lee and Dan Jurgens said they enjoyed the film. Overall, this is still probably the most controversial scene in the entire DCEU, other than maybe the Martha scene in BVS, but I feel like that's less controversial and more just funny. Booster Gold Film In 2015, it was announced that a film centered on Booster Gold was in development, with Greg Berletti hired to direct the film. However, it was revealed in September of 2016 that this film wouldn't be canon to the DCEU. However, in March 2018, this statement was actually walked back on a bit, with Greg Berletti saying it's up to Warner Bros. if it's canon or not. Seeing how Berletti is very experienced with working with cinematic universes, Warner Bros. were probably thinking of making it canon to the DCEU. However, after 2018, this film was never brought up again, so the film was seemingly cancelled sometime after 2018, probably because Greg Berletti was busy with like a million different superhero projects at the time. So what was this film going to look like? Well, outside of rumors that Blue Beetle was going to show up in it, nothing is known. The last thing I'll mention here is that it's possible that whatever was written for this film will be used in the upcoming DCU Booster Gold series, but only time will tell. Crisis on Infinite Earths film? It was revealed in August of 2022 that Warner Bros. had secretly been developing a film based on the legendary comic event Crisis on Infinite Earths. This was undoubtedly going to serve as either the finale to the DCEU or an Avengers Endgame type event where a saga in the DCEU would be completed. In fact, there were actually some reports that the original Flash ending was going to tie into this film, with Ben Affleck's Batman being trapped in the multiverse. However, after the DCU reboot was announced, these plans were abandoned. Although, we're more than likely going to get a Crisis on Infinite Earths film set in the DCU eventually, but it's going to be a very long time. But if you want to experience a Crisis on Infinite Earths adaptation right now, there's the Arrowverse's attempt at adapting it, and the three-part animated adaptation being released right now.
He'll return with more Justice League. The Justice League must defeat a triple threat in three great episodes, all in one game. On the Game Boy Advance, Justice League Chronicles. Rated everyone. Available November. We now return to Justice League. The Wonder Twins film. In February of 2022, it was announced that Adam Stakiel was hired to write and direct a straight-to-HBO Max film based on the Wonder Twins that would be set in the DCEU. And shortly afterwards, in April of 2022, it was announced that Isabel May was casted as Jane and KJ Appa was casted as Zan. It was also confirmed that principal photography was planned for July of the same year. Now, this was really quick. Like, they were really moving this project along. However, in May of 2022, it was announced that the film they were so ready to make was cancelled because of Warner Media's merge with Discovery Inc. Zaslav was actually the one to cancel the film, as he thought the film's budget was too high for a streaming film, and he wanted DC to focus on making theatrical films. The only other thing we know about this film is that it was going to have a budget of $75 million. Yalen Gurr and Kilowog While it's very surprising the DCEU never had a main Green Lantern, there were actually two different Green Lanterns that appeared in the DCEU. They were just very brief cameos. The more obscure cameo is Kilowog, who you can see very briefly lying dead in the ruins of the Hall of Justice in the nightmare sequence in the Snyder Cut. The more obvious cameo was Yalen Gurr, who appears in both the 2017 Justice League film and the Snyder Cut. He's the Green Lantern that's shown being killed by Steppenwolf, and then being shown killed by Darkseid. So yeah, we didn't get Jon Stewart or Hal Jordan, but we got Kilowog and Yalen Gurr. Oh, and uh, according to the director of Blue Beetle, Angel Manuel Soto, that green light at the very beginning of Blue Beetle was a green lantern, so I guess technically we got three lanterns. Wipe out. On August 1st, 2021, a special episode of the game show Wipeout was aired. You see, John Cena was the host of the show, and so in order to promote the 2021 Squad film, John Cena hosted the episode in his Peacemaker outfit. Not only that, but James Gunn, Nathan Fillion, Joel Kinnaman, and Daniela Melchior showed up. Well, James Gunn showed up. Everybody else was there via Zoom call. It's a shame they didn't have them go through the course. That'd be pretty funny. Side note, I love how much John Cena seems to love wearing the Peacemaker outfit. You know when Peacemaker Season 2 happens, this dude's gonna be wearing this thing 24-7. Conrad Carapax So Ignacio Carapax, aka Omac, is often referred to as an original character that's inspired by the Omax in DC Comics. However, that's not the case. Well, kinda, it's weird. You see, Ignacio Carapax's name is extremely similar to Conrad Carapax, aka the Indestructible Man. First appearing in Blue Beetle Issue 1, released in June of 1986, he was a villain of the second Blue Beetle, and was originally an archaeologist whose mind was accidentally transferred into a robotic body. Now, you've probably noticed that Conrad's design is extremely similar to Omac's design in the DCEU. And this is because Omac in the DCEU is basically just an adaptation of Conrad Carapax. In fact, during production, the names Conrad Carapax and the Indestructible Man were both used. However, for some reason, it was decided to change his name and his alter ego. No idea why, but yeah, Omac in the DCEU is basically just the Indestructible Man. Cancelled Flash Series In June of 2022, actress Caroline Kwan went onto Twitter and claimed that her friend had written an eight-episode series about The Flash. However, because of Ezra Miller's many, many, many 
many controversies, the show was cancelled before it was even announced. A few days after this tweet went up, she deleted the tweet. Nothing else is known about this project, and since no more information has come out about it, some have argued that she made it up. Although, I don't think she'd really gain anything from making this up. Some have argued that maybe this wasn't going to be a Flash series that starred Ezra Miller. As if you read the tweet, she never says that they would be involved, just that the series was cancelled because of them. This has led some to believe that this show was going to be similar to Aquaman King of Atlantis, where it would be connected to the film but not actually be canon, and did not have any of the actors reprise their roles. But this is all speculation, there's pretty much nothing known about this cancelled show. The Metal Men film? In April 2007, it was announced by Warner Bros. that a film centered around the superhero team, The Metal Men, was in development, with Eric Champnella writing the film, and for five years, there would be no updates at all. That was until June 2012, when Barry Sonnenfeld was hired to direct the film, and uh, again, nothing happened. Yeah, for nine entire years, the film was in development hell, with no updates. It was then revealed in October of 2021 that the Metal Men film was still happening, and that, shockingly, Sonnenfeld was still directing it. Bro really waited nine years. It was also revealed around this time that the film would be set in the DCEU, and then the film was finally cancelled, as the DC reboot was announced. However, we may still get a Metal Men film, as James Gunn has confirmed that he plans on using the Metal Men in the DCU. Christopher McQuarrie Green Lantern Film In July of 2019, it was revealed by director Christopher McQuarrie that he had at one point pitched a Green Lantern film to DC, that would heavily tie in with a potential Man of Steel 2. This was a written pitch that he had given to Warner Bros, and Warner Bros never responded to his pitch, basically rejecting it. Christopher McQuarrie would then state that he thinks Warner Bros rejected his pitch because they didn't want new ideas. They only wanted to fix their broken ideas. The last thing I'll mention is that it was heavily rumored that this pitch involved Tom Cruise playing Hal Jordan. However, outside of McQuarrie mentioning that this rumor exists, it was never actually confirmed if he was involved with the project. Eric Ludendorff was real. So the, well, technically the secondary antagonist, but he has far more screen time than the main antagonist, but whatever, of Wonder Woman is General Eric Ludendorff. While many comic book fans think he was a character created for the DCEU, in actuality, Ludendorff was a real person. Born on April 9th, 1865, and passing away on December 20th, 1937, due to liver cancer, Ludendorff was a general in the German army, and he wasn't exactly what I would call a good person. I won't go deep into his history, but all you need to know right now is that he was a pretty good general during World War I, and made very significant contributions to the rise of Mustache Man and his stormtroopers. Mustache Man himself even attended his funeral. So yeah, he was pretty evil. Obviously, Ludendorff in the film was a heavily fictionalized version of him. Jason Todd. So this is very vaguely canon, but it's pretty interesting. You see, Amanda Waller's top-secret file on the members of Task Force X, seen in the 2016 Squad film, actually had several pages fully created, with profiles for each of the Squad members. And in Killer Croc's bio, it's mentioned that Jason Todd became the second Robin. But this was never meant to be seen by audience members. It's just a detail on a prop used in the film. So chances are Jason Todd doesn't actually exist in the DCEU, but I like saying he does, so I'm gonna keep saying it. Deathstroke is a huge Halo fan. So this is pretty funny. 
You see, during the production of Justice League, one of the film's weapon designers wanted to have an easter egg relating to the League of Assassins on Deathstroke's sword. So he added the logo of the League of Assassins onto the sword. Except he didn't. Turns out that this logo isn't from DC Comics. Instead, it comes from Halo 2 and was designed by Christopher Barrett. So how did they confuse a Halo emblem with the League of Assassins? Well, it's probably because the symbol appears when you Google Ra's al Ghul symbol. General Zod has no dick. So Reddit user Jetpack Guy posted a theory to Reddit in which he claims that Zod in the DCEU doesn't have a dick. Now, this is an extremely bold claim, so what's his reasoning? Well, Zod was genetically designed from birth to lead the armies of Krypton. And because of this, Kryptonian scientists may not have wanted him to have any distractions, so they didn't give him a sword. Doomsday was created partially from Zod's DNA, and he doesn't have one. After escaping the Phantom Zone, Zod and his crew didn't try and repopulate the Kryptonian race, so he must not have one. And finally, he states that Zod wasn't actually mad at Jor-El for breaking ancient law by having a natural-born son, he was simply mad at Jor-El because he had the one thing that Zod could never have, a child. Although I, I guess he could adopt. It's an interesting theory, although you can easily dismiss the repopulation argument uh, by saying that Zod was so dead set on ancient laws that he wouldn't want to break them even after Krypton was destroyed. I don't know, what do you guys think of the theory? The Flash NFT Edition On July 18th, 2023, The Flash got even more controversial when Warner Bros. released the entire Flash film not on Blu-ray, not on DVD, not via streaming, not digitally. Well, okay, no, it was released digitally on this date, but it was also released through the blockchain. Yeah, they released the film as an NFT. But this wasn't just the film, no, no, no. You also got secret AR collectibles. And every time you bought the film, you would get some exclusive character art of either The Flash, Young Flash, Supergirl, or Batman, each with their own level of rarity. This was the Mystery Edition, which costed $35. There was also the Premium Edition, which came with some motion art along with four dynamic menu interfaces. Whatever that means. This costed $100. Yeah, overall, this was really, really lame. Not exactly an unpopular take, but NFTs are bad. The Adversary During development on the 2016 Bad Guy Squad film, it was reported that the big bad of the film was going to be a character named The Adversary. Now, there's no character in DC Comics called The Adversary, so fans were a bit confused. However, because of leaks and other reports, it was quickly revealed that the adversary was just a code name some people behind the scenes were using for Enchantress. She probably got that code name because of her allies, the Eyes of the Adversary. Yeah, bet you didn't know these things had a name. Novels. So as I've talked about in other superhero icebergs, while Marvel and DC superheroes are mostly known for their appearances in comics, movies, cartoons, video games, and live-action shows, they do occasionally step into the world of novels. And while the MCU doesn't have any novels outside of film adaptations, the DCEU actually does have a few novels that aren't just film adaptations, although those still do exist. There's three of them. The first being Man of Steel, The Early Years, written by Frank Whitman. Released in April of 2013, this short novel provides some more info on Clark's younger years and how he learned to use his powers. The next novel is Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice Crossfire. Written by Michael Kogi and released in February of 2016, 
This novel takes place about two weeks after Man of Steel, and it tells the story of how Bruce Wayne began to really hate and fear the Man of Steel. Side note, this novel was written within two to three weeks. The final original novel set in the DCEU is Aquaman, Undertow. Released in November of 2018 and written by Steve Belling, this novel serves as a prequel to the 2018 film. It tells the story of a 13-year-old Arthur figuring out who he is. Now, technically, there's two more novels, but they're not normal novels. These being Aquaman, Arthur's Guide to Atlantis, written by Alexandra West, and Shazam, Freddy's Guide to Superheroing, written by Steve Belling. These serve as in-universe journals. Oh, and I guess there's also Time Out Shortlist, Gotham and Metropolis, which was released in February of 2016 and was written by Daniel Wallace. Created in partnership with Turkish Airlines and Time Out Group, this is an in-universe travel guide for Metropolis and Gotham City. Our Man Film In March of 2021, it was announced that a film about Our Man set in the DCEU was in development with Gavin James and Neil Widener serving as the film's writers. This was after years of trying to get an Our Man project up and running in the early 2010s. And while his show was at one point in the cards, plans fell through, but the character would appear in the Arrowverse. So yeah, after all this time, DC was finally working on an Our Man film. But then the DCEU ended. Technically, Our Man hasn't been cancelled, however, if this film does end up happening, it won't be connected to the DCEU, like it was originally supposed to. The Mother Box Meal in promotion for the Snyder Cut's release, Warner Bros. and DC partnered with Wonderland at Home to create the Motherbox Meal. This was a multi-course meal kit meant for either two or four people. So what did the Motherbox Meal come with? Well, there's the Ocean Trench, which is a seafood appetizer that comes in a tin can. It's pickled cod with some batter bits and trench dressing. Then there's the Big Belly Burger, which is supposed to be an in-universe burger. In fact, this is the same burger that a truck driver was trying to eat when he nearly ran over Iris West. This burger has some Angus steak, pretzel buns, and a special cheese sauce that's said to taste like nacho cheese. Then there's Chacos, which is a snack food that Martian Manhunter is addicted to. They're little cookies with jalapeno, salsa, and cheese disguised as Oreos. Then there's the Resurrection Souffle. This is a souffle themed after Superman's dead body being brought back to life. It's basically a standard souffle with popcorn from Smallville on top of it. Next, there's the Bat which is uh, just the chocolate bar, shaped like the bat symbol. It's got a caramel center though, so uh, that's cool. Next is two cans of Jitters Coffee, which is once again an in-universe product, straight from Central City. It's basically a cold brew oatmeal latte. Next, there's the Ancient Themyscirin Fire, which are pre-smoked marshmallows with a Palo stick and a QR code you can scan to play music. Then there's Cole Brown Night and Day. One is an Indian Pale Lager, and the other is a Dark Lager. I don't drink, so I have no idea what this means, but I'm sure that's a good thing. Or bad. I don't know. I don't care. And finally, there's Element X, an energy drink that's meant to be the metal that makes up Cyborg's armor liquefied. Delicious. Anyways, it's a powder you put into some water. And that's the mother box. It costed $130. I have no idea if it was worth it. I didn't buy it. Go check out Dorian Reyes Black's review of it on nerdbot.com. It's a great read. Where were the Justice Society? So ever since the release of Black Adam, there's been a big question on the minds of every DCEU fan. Where was the Justice Society during the events of the rest of the DCEU? Because Dr. Fate and crew could have been pretty helpful during Steppenwolf's invasion. 
Well, the answer is... they were disbanded. Yeah, it seems a lot of people forget this, but their appearance in Black Adam was their first mission after reforming. So up until the time of Black Adam, the team wasn't a thing. Dr. Fate and the original Atom Smasher were retired. However, Hawkman never stopped being a vigilante, so... I guess the question is now, where was Hawkeye during the rest of the DCEU? No idea, and we're probably never going to get an answer. Madam X Film In June 2021, an HBO Max series focused on the character Madam Xanadu was announced to be in development, with Angela Robinson brought in to write the show and to serve as an executive producer. J.J. Abrams was also brought in to serve as an executive producer. Like with the Constantine series I mentioned earlier, this series was meant to lead into the Justice League Dark HBO Max series. However, like Constantine, the series didn't last very long in development, as by September of 2022, the show was cancelled. Though it was reported, it was being shopped around to other streaming services. Although, it's almost been two years, and there's been no update. And now the DCEU is over, so... It's not looking good for Madam X. Blackhawks Film In April of 2018, it was revealed that Steven Spielberg would be producing a film based on the DC Comics character Blackhawk, a World War II fighter pilot that leads a squadron of pilots called the Blackhawks. It was also revealed that David Cope was brought in to write the film. Spielberg would then say he wouldn't begin working on the project until Indiana Jones 5 and West Side Story were released. So, uh, where's the film? Both of these films were released, and there hasn't been much talk about this film. Well, in March of 2022, David Cope revealed that because of management changes inside Warner Bros., it was very difficult to get Black Hawk into production especially since the film's script would require the film to be $200 million. He also revealed that the script he wrote didn't set the film in the DCEU. However, he was very open to the idea of making the film canon with the DCEU if Warner Bros. and DC wanted him to. And since March 2022, there hasn't been any updates on this film, so it's probably never going to happen. Frosty the Snowman cover-up So in June 2020, Warner Bros. was getting some backlash from fans and critics alike, after Ray Fisher began speaking out about how terribly he, Gal Gadot, Jason Momoa, Ben Affleck, etc. were treated during Justice League's reshoots. And Warner Bros. weren't really happy about this. Meanwhile, around this time, a weird announcement was made that stated that Jason Momoa was going to voice Frosty the Snowman in a live-action adaptation of the classic Christmas special. However, this report was fake. There was no Frosty movie being made with Jason Momoa. And in September of 2020, Jason Momoa would allege that the fake Frosty the Snowman report was made to distract from Ray Fisher speaking out against Warner Bros. Ray Fisher would back up Jason Momoa's claim. Now, this hasn't ever been officially confirmed. This is only a theory that Jason Momoa has put out there. But if it is true, what an insane story. Serena Williams' Wonder Woman so when I talked about the comics set in the DCEU, I showed off the covers to a bunch of comics. However, I purposely left out a comic miniseries set in the DCEU, that being Serving Up Justice, a four-part miniseries released via DirecTV's website and written by Amanda Dybert. This is probably the most insane story in the entire DCEU as it tells the story of Wonder Woman working together with real-life tennis champion Serena Williams to battle Dr. Cyber and her army of robots made of tennis ball machines. But it wasn't just Wonder Woman and Serena Williams who teamed up. Oh no. 
it was a four-person team-up between those two, an alternate universe Serena Williams, who was the Wonder Woman of her reality, and an alternate universe Diana Prince, who in her reality is a professional tennis player. It's a wild story that only gets crazier. Because in promotion for Wonder Woman 1984, Warner Bros. partnered with DirecTV to create a commercial that stars the alternate universe Serena Williams battling various tennis ball robots. Like I said, this is probably the craziest story in the entire DCEU. The mass R-word of the Amazons. So originally, Wonder Woman 2017 was going to be a lot darker. According to Connie Nielsen, who played Hippolyta in four DCEU projects, Patty Jenkins rejected a pretty awful origin story for the Amazons. Quote, She was very clear about what the Amazons were supposed to be, and I think that there had originally been some idea that the Amazons had been deeply traumatized by some kind of horrible event that involved mass R-word. And Patty just said, hmm, no, no, no. We're not going to put that on those Amazons. We don't want to start out seeing them as victims. And why should we? Let's just get rid of that part and make sure that these are heroes in their own terms. They've not been part of the victims of history. They are these unbelievably courageous women, and we're not going to saddle them with trauma from the outset. We're going to have them be received by people on the basis of who they are. Thank God Patty Jenkins rejected that idea, because that just sounds horrible. And there we have it, uh, ladies, gentlemen, and MBs. We got uh, the DCEU Iceberg. Pretty fun to make, in my opinion. It was pretty fun to look back at all the uh, cancelled projects, because there were a lot of them. Um, I actually began this iceberg a lot earlier than I was, than I was going to. I was originally going to begin it um, early in February, but I actually started working on it in like uh, mid to late, like mid to late uh, January, when I was supposed to be still on my break. Um, I just felt lazy, to be honest with you. I just, I just felt like I should be working on it. You know, I felt kind of guilty for not working on it. So I just started working on it. This video was actually um, going to be was going to be the November like of a last year iceberg. It was going to be uh, November twenty twenty three, but uh, you know, then I thought about it and it's just like, why would I make it right before Aquaman two? Like, this just seems kind of weird to do this big tribute to the DCEU, but like release it before the last film comes out. You know, so switched it up with Wonder Woman. Um, which caused a lot more work for me because the Wonder Woman iceberg was a lot of work. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed. It was fun to make. Uh, I don't really have much else to say. Uh, next month is the Universal Century Gundam iceberg. I don't expect it to do good because uh, outside of Evangelion, uh, none of those like anime-inspired uh, icebergs do any do uh, do well. Um, but uh, I've promised it for so so long now. Uh, I, I, I gotta make it. I gotta make it. So, yeah. Uh, ho ho if you're interested in that, hope you enjoy. If you're not, I don't know. Wait until the, no, wait until the next month, I guess. I don't know. Um, the next superhero-related iceberg, I, I, I'm not sure which one it's gonna be, but I know it's gonna be Marvel, uh, not DC, because, uh, the last Marvel iceberg was, uh, the MCU Part 2, which was back in August of last year. And uh, before that was Iron Man, which was in May of last year, I believe. May or April. Was it? I don't know. It was one of those two months. Um, whereas the DC, you had the Wonder, Wonder, Wonder Woman, uh, this iceberg, obviously, and the Flash within like a year or so. I think it's about time I might go back to Marvel. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I don't have anything else to really say. Uh, stay safe and all that, and I will see you guys in the uh, the next iceberg. So yeah, uh, have a good one, guys. Hey, Robloxians. I'm Officer Bowles. And I'm... <laughs>